We need Catholic education because it is the complete education. And at a secular education, they may learn certain things, but they will not learn the ultimate truth. They will not learn to connect all of the truth to the person of Christ and the meaning, the meaning of life, which cannot be taught out there. Well, my son Michael's in first grade, and what he brings every night to the dinner table is out of this world. And the beautiful thing about the classical curriculum is that at this stage in first grade, they are just little sponges and they're soaking up so much information and they're bringing home questions, deep questions about why the world is the way it is and why do we have freedom? Do we have freedom because of the Bill of Rights? Do we have freedom because God wills it? Is it a combination of both? Very good, five times five equals Excellent. Five times six equals 30. Excellent. These are constantly reproducing themselves. That's even how we stay alive. Even when you sleep? Even when you sleep. Yeah. What I love is the faith tied in with the curriculum and how they grasp it all, which is pretty impressive. Before the printing press was invented, there was a reintroduction of ancient culture from what places? Yes. Uh, Rome. Rome and? You remember? Greece. Greece. I think the curriculum is rigorous, but certainly not elitist. When kids' minds are challenged and they're able to think and they're given a greater world of thought, they become excited and they want to know more. Who's got the second word, the big one? You got it, Thomas? Our mission is to educate our children, make them faithful Catholics with loving hearts of John Bosco, who are great thinkers who know how to think critically, know how to read, know how to articulate themselves, uh, very smart, and have developed the reason and God-given faculty. It's not overwhelming to them. They're so excited to learn. He comes home every day with these big eyes to tell us what he learned that day. By focusing on how we are to live, we're trying to form a human being who knows how to think, who knows how to feel, and feel, feel rightly, and then can decide how to act. Why is it significant that Charlemagne was crowned by the Pope? Why does this matter to medieval history? Yes? Because for many years after that, there was still a relationship between the state and the church. They play a huge role in one another's existence. Everything that we do is filled with faith and filled with God and His truth and His goodness and His beauty. What we do is simply impart what already is. We don't have to indoctrinate. We just bring them to the joy of knowing there is truth and the truth is the person of Jesus. Sonnet 116 by William Shakespeare. Let us not to the marriage of true minds admit impediments. Love is not love which alters when an alteration finds or bends with a remover to remove. George Washington's rules of civility. Detract not from others but neither be excessive and commending. From Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Out, out, brief candle, life's but a walking shadow, a poor player that struts and frets in a tower upon the stage. In Flanders Fields by John McCray. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow. You have this huge tradition that has so much to offer us. Ask any second grader in this building what they learned from, from the Greeks and the Romans. They can go on and on and on, and it's beautiful. In principio era verbum. In the beginning was the word. They come home and tell us these words that we don't even know, but then they explain what they are. And I just think a first grader who knows Latin is pretty amazing. In yeah, principio era verum. Yeah, but that's Latin. What does that mean in English? God was already there in the beginning. What began? God created the earth in when the beginning. When God created the earth? This is the other thing. He said to me, Mom, sometimes I wake up and I read books. Sometimes I pray the rosary, and sometimes I'll just play. And I'm like, oh, I, didn't, I didn't pray the rosary. I mean, I just think that it's so neat to have this backing of your faith at such a young age in a school. And I know that they have this great faith formation here, and they won't lose that. What we know here is everything has to do with God because we're looking at what has God shown us in creation. Everything around us is a manifestation of his love. 
look for it. Just open your eyes. That's all you need to do to see it. And at, at growing levels of complexity, the kids are learning about what God has put forth in his creation for us. Oh, there's a nest right there in the tree. Yeah. I'm just so grateful for the curriculum. My son comes home thrilled with what he's learning at school. He wonders, if I were born in ancient Greece, would I be more comfortable as an Athenian or as a Spartan? I think that he's thinking about his place in the world as a first grader, which I don't think other schools would have that capability of encouraging him to explore his place in the world at such a young age. I mean, he's six years old and he's learning things I didn't even think about until college. <laughs> Fifth grade and our middle school kids have been uh, learning by heart parts of our founding documents. They're putting the values of our founding fathers into the hearts of the children. And in the classroom, they're discussing, now what do these words mean? What do they mean to the founding fathers? What do they mean to us today, future voters, as we look at the kids in the class? What is it that our government is supposed to be doing? And what are the values that we hold dear? It is teaching them to reason and to think so that when questions come up, as they're coming up more and more, that challenge our beliefs and our teachings, even by laws, they know why and how to confront those with truth in love. Because truth without love is not of God. And so we teach them also to love, and that they are loved first of all. Music is an expression of God's beauty. When we started the school, it clearly was uh, and we still talk about it at the board level, it, it was a faith experience. It was a calling by the Holy Spirit. It made no sense. We didn't have any faculty. We didn't have any students. We didn't have a location. We weren't sure what we were going to We just knew that we needed to respond, you know, to the need for this kind of education in our community. And we're really called as Catholics to, to provide these opportunities for our children. It's not really something that's an option. It's really something we're demanded to do. We're really on the verge of, okay, now we have our model. Now there's an opportunity to teach others. There's an opportunity to expand and to grow. And whether or not that's the calling for this school or not is really going to be up to the Holy Spirit, but I think it is. When I'm out in public, I get more questions about how's the school going than anything that I do. I see the commitment that the parents make. I think they're the real heroes in all of this. They have a lot of opportunities to send their children to other schools. At St. John Bosco, it's all about starting with the faith and things are built around that. I think we had a broader vision that really what we were responding to was the broader worldwide need for a, a renaissance in Catholic education and that that might mean one day more than one school. It really wasn't just about our children, although that was our first concern. It was really about all the children. So if you can't get excited about this, then you probably can't get excited about too many things in life because this is what it's all about. It's that next generation and getting that next generation off to that great start. Well, St. John Bosco is known as the father, teacher, and friend of youth. He understood that education is a matter of the heart. I mean, that ties in so well with the classical model, too. He loved kids first. And he understood, he said once that, if you love what the children love, they will grow to love what you love. Um, so, you know, he would play with the kids. I mean, they, our teachers are out there having soccer games with, with the classes, and, and there's, a, there's a little rivalry in the hallway about, you know, which college did this one go to and that one go to, and the kids form these little teams because they love their teachers, they love their guides, they love the ones who are leading them. And that relationship is so key, it's so central to what we do. Without it, no real education takes place. This is a matter of the heart, and that is our central goal, is to reach kids' hearts. So having St. John Bosco as our patron is such an inspiring idea, an incredible charism. Um, we simply keep praying to, to live up to it. <laughs>